Here we have a sample proportion problem, and we are given the pi of 14%, and that is the architects and engineers who are women in 2004. This is from a Department of Labor study. Suppose a random sample of 50 architects and engineers is selected, and 11 are women. Okay, so um, our population uh, proportion, pi, is 0.14, and then P, our sample proportion, is 11 out of 50, or 22%. Okay, so the answer to A is 0.22. All right, now we have three different things we're going to look at here um, in a moment here. And so I've got the three uh, uh, bell curves here to draw on uh, that will hopefully help us what we're looking at here. And uh, they want to know the standard deviation of your sample of 50 architects and engineers. Okay, and that is this denominator right here. Pi times 1 minus pi over n, and you take the square root of that. So don't forget uh, when you're calculating these to take the square root. Uh, sometimes there are all the calculations in there, pi and 1 minus pi, people forget. So uh, we want to make sure that we get that. So if we were to write this down, we would have 0.14. 0.14 times 1 minus 0.14 over, what, 50? And the square root, we take the square root of all of that. So we have 0.14 times 0.86 divided by 50, and then take the square root of that. And what we come up with that is 0 0.049471. Okay. All right, so that is our standard deviation. So that's the answer to part B. And now looking at the information we have from parts A and B, I'm on C now, what is the probability that in your sample of, what is the probability that in your sample of, of finding 11 or more women in a sample of 50 architects and engineers, what's the probability of that result, basically, I'm trying, what I'm trying to say. Uh, all right, so we want to find the likelihood of that. And so what we will do then is we will drop our values here that we've calculated from A and B into the formula here. So we're going to have come up with a Z value. And we want to know what's the probability of finding more than that. OK, so this is part C. So we would have Z equals 0.22 minus 0.14, right, our pi value, over this 0.049071. OK, so that's the denominator that we just calculated in B. Okay, so then our result of that, then, is z is going to be 1.63. Okay, so 1.63 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, so we will have, on this first part, we'll call this c. I got 0, and in our table here, 1.63, or our modified standard normal, this is 0.44, what, 84. Okay, and that's from 0 to 1.63. Uh, and then to get the probability of exceeding that, we would say 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4484. And that is going to be uh, 0.0516. Okay, so there's just over a 5% chance. 0 0.05. 516, just over a 5% chance of finding that many or more women engineers in a sample of 50 based on the population proportion of 14%. Okay? All right, so that's our answer for part B, uh, 0.0516. Um, how likely is it that a random sample will contain fewer than five women in these, in these uh, positions? All right. So if our result were, instead of 11 uh, here, and I'm going to pause and I'm going to erase, erase some of this so we have room to write. Okay, so I've written down the answers that we've calculated so far, and now we're on part D. And they're saying, um, how likely is it that our result will contain five, uh, fewer than five women? Okay, so now we've got a new, or we would have a new 
sample proportion, which would be 5 out of 50, and that's going to be 10%. Right? So now our, this part of our equation uh, is going to be z is equal to 0.1 minus 0.14 over, and our denominator remains the same here, right, because our sample size is still the same, and our, our population proportion is still the same too, so we have 0 0.049071. And our result there then, you'll notice this will be a negative value because 0.1 is less than uh, 0.14, and so our result there is uh, negative 0 0.82. Okay, and so we're below the mean in part C, and when we look the value up in the table, that's going to show us the, the, the probability between 0 and negative 0.82. So let's find that, negative 0.82. So there, that space is 0.2939, and we're going to say 0.5 minus that to find the, the likelihood of being below. This is the area we're interested in right there. And that result is going to be 0 0.2061. Okay, so 0 0.2061 is that result. Okay, so now uh, we've got part E that says if your sample were to change to 200, how will that change your answer to part C? Okay, so I'm going to pause again and clear this, and we'll look at that result now. Okay, part E now, we've got a sample size of 200 rather than 50, and they're asking how it will change our answer to part C. Okay, so if we have then in the, uh, looking back to part C, we've got now we've got P is going to be 11 out of 200, Okay, and that's equal to 0.055. Okay, pi is still 0.14, but our standard deviation calculation is going to change. Right, that's the denominator here. So we would have point, uh, we would have 0.14 times 1 minus 0.14 over 200. We'll take the square root of all of that. So we have a new standard deviation here, and that is going to be point zero two four five three six. So then what we would have is point zero five five minus point one four over this new standard deviation to get our z value. And that is going to be, when we calculate it all, negative 3.46. Okay, so 3.46, right, is this value here. But essentially what that comes down to is there's, there would be almost no chance of that result, right? A negative 3.46 is so far, uh, in this case, into the lower tail that it would, it would almost never happen, right? If you came up with that result, you would question the overall proportion probably that you were given to start with and say, is that really uh, possible uh, to get a, a result that included so few uh, women, 11 in this case, out of a sample of 200 if our population proportion is really 14%. Uh, but then, anyway, the answer uh, as far as how would that change it, it would result, uh, that would be a, a very unlikely outcome, almost impossible.